Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in. Uh, good to see you. Got a good Bible verse for the day, Francis. You know, on the day of fasting. What's the Bible verse you got? Blessed are the hunger. <laughs> right, okay. Is there... Oh, sorry. Sorry, it was. Uh, I'm allergic to a few things. No wonder I was sneezing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry for that, guys. Um, okay, um, so we are in chapter nine of the local church. We finished uh, seven and eight in the last class. We're in chapter nine in your PDFs, we're page 55. In your hard copy, which page number are you? 84? Awesome. Okay. Um, so I hope you've been learning something and taking, uh, taking something new uh, of this subject about the house of God and the importance of it and the importance God gives, uh, right? So we all know that it's God's idea. Uh, we've learned that from the start. Um, so in this chapter, we'll look at the aspect of how the house of God or the church of God or the church is uh, like a family of God, okay? Um, so every time we see in the scripture where house of God or the household of God is referred to, it's referring to a corporate congregation. You know where a bunch of people come together so that's you know that's what it's referring to um so let's look at a few scriptures uh you guys can hear me uh, nickel can you hear me okay okay all right uh so from your notes there are a few scriptures that i want to, us to look at galatians chapter 6 verse 10 it says therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all okay uh, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Okay, the again, there's a, there are, are a lot of things that you can stress about uh, or accentuate from that verse. But one particular set of words that we are looking at is the household of faith. Okay, but you can look at as we have opportunity. Uh, Ecclesiastes, I, uh, oh man, which chapters? Uh, it says we've all been given a time and a chance. Right. We, oh, sorry. Ecclesiastes. I uh, forget which chapter. Uh, either nine or eleven. It says we've all been given a time and a chance. That means, in other words, opportunity. Uh, right. For us and how we make use of what what we do with the time and what we do with the chance is up to us. So it says here we have the opportunity. Right. We have this chance. We have in this particular time. We've been given this opportunity. We don't know how long this time is going to be there, and we don't know how long this we're going to have this chance. It is a possibility that we will miss out on this opportunity. Uh, so opportunity is a more of a positive word, isn't it? It's like, oh, I missed that opportunity. I got this job opportunity from this company, and I missed it. Right? We say it with a little bit of uh, slight regret, isn't it? Um, so. Do we feel the same when we say that we have opportunity, right? You and I have the opportunity to lead in worship, or pray, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and let us do good to all. Um, and it's amazing, that word, if you have to just Google and see in how many scriptures, places, you say do good, comes in, you'll be uh, amazed at it. Uh, even some, why am I forgetting scriptures, dude? <laughs> Psalm 37 or 34, uh, I think it's 37. It's it's on the left side of my Bible. <laughs> so I remember. Uh, it's okay, guys. Don't turn in. Uh, it, time and time again, it would say, do not fret, do not fret, do not fret, do not fret. Like, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Uh, and then it says, while you, don't, not being afraid, and while you're waiting, uh, don't forget to do good. 
it says that right uh, even uh, hebrews chapter 13 uh, when we talks about praise as a spiritual sacrifice it says offer a praise as spiritual sacrifice and don't forget to do good right uh, there's something about it then you know um, in, in the house of god as the people of god he's expecting us to do good things okay uh, what that looks like it can look like a lot of things okay but let's move on so that's the household of faith uh, ephesians 2:19 it says now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of god um that verse is pretty deep but we in the later chapter we'll look we'll go a little bit more deeper into that verse okay again we are we are citizens of the household of god okay now it's very interesting um every time household is mentioned or the house of god is mentioned is not referring to a building anywhere isn't it it's very interesting so it but it's a spiritual entity isn't it and we are all citizens now we are not strangers we were but we are not now right uh, we are citizens with the saints and members of the household uh, that's pretty deep one more scriptures first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 too early in the morning the prince what is this <laughs> first timothy chapter 3 verse 15 it says but if i am delayed i write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself uh, in the house of god Uh, which is the church of the living god the pillar and the ground of the truth again a lot of things but focus on look at the progression of the choice of words he starts off by saying uh, okay leave everything else but house of god and then he goes on to say it is the church of the living god okay uh, which is the pillar and the ground of the truth <clears throat> all right uh, first peter chapter 2 verse 5 uh, it says you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house um, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ so um, it's a process that we are being built up we, it doesn't say that we are built like in the past tense it's present continuous right it's, uh, if you have to use a grammar thing it's a present continuous like uh, isaiah 6 uh, one translation says the train of his robe Uh, i mean nkjv was will say it filled the temple the train of his robe filled that means it was done but there's a one translation that says uh, the train of his robe was filling right again present continuous filling right uh, so uh, it's very interesting but again we're not studying isaiah chapter 6 so we'll, let's not go too deep into that um so house of god household of god it's a spiritual entity it's a spiritual house and, and we are citizens of it you and i are citizens of it and we have the opportunity to do good right um so the house uh, in greek is oikos which simply refers to <clears throat> dwelling It simply refers to dwelling okay um so again in the hebrew when we say dwelling place it offers refer often refers to the tabernacle so the tabernacle in literal sense was the dwelling place that's what it is isn't it and in john chapter 1 was 14 when where we see uh, the word became flesh and he dwelt among us is nothing but he tabernacled around us and again if you have to go to the root meaning of it like to the raw meaning of it it simply means he pitched his tent that's what that's what happened so he pitched is his tent among us okay so the house of god is a dwelling place right uh, he dwells in us and then in also corporately where, wherever we meet he's present are you guys following all good okay so uh, can anyone tell me where uh, the word uh, words house of god is mentioned for the first time in the bible bible Jesus goes to the temple you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves den of thieves it's called the house of prayer okay but the house of god it's mentioned house of god yeah no 
it has it, it mentioned house of god samza no no i'm asking i thought you were saying or you're asking i wasn't sure asking okay no it's not from psalms it's not from psalm acts no yeah it's somewhere in the bible <laughs> Oh boy, do you need another cup of coffee or something? <laughs> Francis? Guess, dude. <laughs> house of God. House of God is mentioned for the first time in the Bible. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Anand, where are you looking at? Where? Sorry? Set, uh, no. Why you stop, dude? Why you stop? You're saying no something. Mites. If you don't know, just say don't know, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Genesis 28. Let's go to Genesis 28. Let's read a bunch of scriptures, okay? Genesis chapter 28, we'll go to verse 10. So please remember everything that we've spoken of about the house of God, about the church of God so far, right? And all the scriptures that we've read. All right. Um, so let's read from verse 10, Genesis 28, verse 10. It says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night. Because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones and of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth. Okay? And its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Okay? Now, all this is very important. It's like a build up. Uh, right, so what was happening? There was a ladder that was set up on the earth, right, and its top reached to the heavens. So there are diff two different realities that is connected, right? The reality of earth and the reality of heaven. Okay, if you've seen any uh, science fiction movies, they'll call it as portals. Like you go from like a portal, right? You know what happens if you've seen Avengers Endgame and all. That. And verse 13, it says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all families of earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you I will keep, and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. What a glorious word. Uh, verse 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said... Guys, did you just realize that God made is reminding is uh and again making like something like a covenant in some in a dream? I mean that that is yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's it, you know, even Solomon's dream, we know of you know, and they're having a conversation in the dream, and in the dream, Solomon knew what he wanted and what to ask for. It's crazy, isn't it? Like some of us being awake only, we don't know what to ask for. Uh, in the dream, hey, dream, oh Lord. <laughs> but check that out. Okay, verse seventeen. And he was afraid and said, 
how awesome is this place? Okay, a word study there. He says he was afraid, and then he says how awesome. Again, the root meaning of the word awesome, awe, means terror. That's the root word meaning of it. Okay, like terror is what? From, it's from the word terror, you get terrorists, terrifying, uh, terrified, all of that, isn't it? So when we say God is the awesomeness of God, say you are awesome, we are saying that, okay, you're not someone to be messed around with. Take him seriously. Okay. Uh, so how awesome is this place? I mean, how holy is this place? You know, it's it's filled with his presence. This this is none other than the house of God. There's no building. Yeah. But look at what goes on to say, what he goes on to say. And this is the gate of heaven. What's the big deal about it? What does the gate do? It opens and closes. That's one feature of a gate, isn't it? And you know, like let's say a college campus gate, it opens, it shuts. But when you open, you can either come into the campus or you can go out from the campus to the other reality of the world. Yes or no? So he's saying the house of God is like the gate of heaven. And so it's supposed to usher in people from one reality to the other reality. Are you with me? So anyone who steps into the house of God, if you know, is they're coming in from the reality of the world and they're walking into the reality of heaven. That's how the house of God should be. Like a ladder that connects earth to heaven. Understood? Okay, and the re remaining of the chapter is also amazing, but we'll not read that. Uh, maybe I will. Verse 18, it says, Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. How's it God? Okay. But the name of the city had been Luz previously. Luz or Luz, whatever. Okay, Luz, L-U-Z. Is, 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 that's what in your Bible also, no? Okay, so again, the meaning of the word or the, or the name Luz means almond tree or the land of the nuts, land of almonds. Um, so almond tree has a very significant role in the in the Jewish culture. You remember the vision Jeremiah has? Uh, if you remember, God asks, okay, Jeremiah, what do you see? Uh, I see an almond tree. For us who don't understand anything, it's like, yeah. <laughs> What's the big deal? Yeah, you know, maybe next time you'll see a mango tree. You know, I don't know. <laughs> but the almond tree in their culture uh, was a symbol of new beginning because after the winter season, during the springtime, the first tree to come bloom was the almond tree. And so it was a sign of new beginning. And so you see this land was formerly known as an almond thing, and now it's known as the house of God. It's showing something. It's the beginning of something new, isn't it? OK, so it's beautiful. Nothing is mentioned in the Bible for the sake of being mentioned, guys. All right, I hope you are all still with me. Um, all right, so going back to the notes, page 55, uh, talking about the house of God. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 25, again, just to paraphrase that scripture, Jesus is the master of the house. Where he is the God of the house, right? Uh, we we cannot forget that. Uh, that that particular verse in Matthew ten twenty five says, and you have some people accusing Jesus, They're like, oh, I don't think you know you are the leader of the demons or whatever, Belzebub. Uh, then, yeah, okay. Okay, let's move on. Um, any questions, any thoughts so far? Uh, are you all with me learning? Yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah, just think about the reality and the beauty of what we are supposed to be. Uh, you know, the first time Bethel or uh, the house of God is mentioned in the Bible, it's like a ladder. Uh, you know, the house of God is we is where we say that's where he dwells, isn't it? And again, I apologize for bringing up tabernacle again, but the tabernacle was the meeting place. It was it it was the place where heaven and earth collided, right? It was the one place where divinity met with humanity. 
you with me and so that's the dwelling place tabernacle and here the house of god in greek we saw that it simply means dwelling place um right so if that is the case uh people walking in should step in and say oh wow i feel like i'm in heaven right something about this place or something about the people here uh you know is so different because the reality is different because everybody lives according to the kingdom culture and not according to the pop culture of the world are you following guys yeah and all of that comes down to that word called opportunity but yeah let's move on uh three impl important implications of the local church being a family okay uh, so remember we are talking about the local church as a family of god in this chapter all right so three important implications of uh, the local church being a family. First thing is a proper way to conduct yourself. So if we go back to the previous page in First Timothy chapter three verse fifteen that scripture is mentioned. But if I'm delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God. So, in other words, as a parent. Behave yourself. That's what he's saying. Right? Paul is telling Timothy, behave yourself or learn how to behave. I'll be a little late. Don't trouble them. You know, if you leave your children with some, your relatives or something, you say, okay, I'm going to leave you there. Okay. So conducting yourself uh, is very important, isn't it? So we ought to be taught. Children are taught and everybody has to be taught how to conduct themselves in, in, the, in the house of God, isn't it? Um, you know, I have to conduct myself a certain way as a teacher. You have to conduct a, a certain way as a student, right? I can't put my leg on the seat and say, take class like this. Okay. Immediately, something else you'll be thinking of me, right? <laughs> so I remember this one time, the import, uh, you know, I had to take the youth on youth missions. Uh, we went to Berampur. Anyone from, no one from Berampur here, right? Okay. So, uh, you know, every time we go before, before going on a youth, uh, on a mission trip, a pastor Nancy will give a debrief, uh, as, you know, especially to the young people saying, okay, you, you guys are going to Berampur. It's not necessarily an urban area. So uh, this is a youth conference. So expect at least 200 young people. And so she gives us a debrief, okay, uh, you know, um, avoid to wearing toned jeans or shorts, which is okay in, in urban setting, but it's not so, uh, you know, because it's still very different back there. So all of that was there, and then we we reached Berampur, and uh, and then I had a meeting with the youth. We ten of us went. I I told them, okay, see, two hundred young people are going to be there for this conference. They do not know that, uh, you know, let's say all of us went. They do not know that you are a student or you are a working professional. You are studying architecture or engineering or chartered account, whatever. They don't know all of that. They don't even know that you're volunteering with APC. They don't care. They don't need to know. All they know or they will see is that APC is here. That means 10 pastors are there. OK, so I told them, you better behave yourself. <laughs> know how to conduct yourself, OK? Because uh, 200 people are watching, and they're thinking that, OK, then 10 young pastors are there. And because everybody, everybody was, were taking a session. Right. And so it is very easy Like for young people. They were also, what, 24, the average age that, you know, was 24. So it is very easy for young people to switch off, look at their phones and dream or sleep, feel sleepy. It's a whole day event. Um, so I had to teach them, OK, so if you're feeling sleepy, just bring a notebook, start writing everything. So keep writing whatever it is, you know, <laughs> so it at least looks like you're writing, you know. Um, that's my trick, by the way. <laughs> so if you're writing a lot, I know what's happening. Then <laughs> I've seen a lot, huh, Prince? <laughs> OK, um, so we're talking about three important implications of the local church being a family. One is knowing and learning how to conduct ourselves. It's very important, right? Uh, you can't just be the way you want to be, like you're at home, you know, uh, Priests in the tabernacle didn't wear whatever they felt like wearing, right? Uh, everything, whatever they wore, it was inscribed holy unto the Lord. So it's pretty serious. Okay, the second thing is boundaries between the natural and the spiritual. This is awesome. Boundaries, everybody say boundaries. Okay, boundaries will save your lives, guys. 
okay not four four you know so uh <laughs> boundaries will save your life whoa whoa kya hota hai okay <laughs> i don't know what happened okay uh yeah boundaries are very important now here's what will happen in an immature circle right if people are not spiritually mature when they say we are a family of god in the church it a time will come maybe you know it's like oh we are a family brother hi brother can i come and stay with you can i make your house my house not pay rent you know a hey, brother no so what help a brother out you know what i'm saying okay i have family of god you know okay uh hi sister we are sisters why don't you write your house property in my name and give because same family you know give me your wealth give me your you know <laughs> uh, what do i say yeah it's it's going it's not just missing out on the boundary line it's uh, point blank immature isn't it taking certain things very literally and not understanding the difference between the spiritual family and 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 the real natural family okay and so paul kind of expounds this on uh, second thessalonians 3 and i'd encourage you to read that entire chapter when you can second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 to 16 and we're not going to do that now okay so uh being part of a uh, spiritual family does not permit the crossing of the natural family line right boundaries so uh, boundaries are important and boundaries are important in relationships so that's the second point boundaries between natural and the spiritual okay um and then finally a family has culture values purposes and dreams okay every family will have a culture uh, culture can look like there is bad culture and good culture okay that's a different topic but there is a culture in every family okay it can be that everybody at 8 o'clock has dinner together at the same time that's one culture right after uh, before that they will all meet for family prayer before or after for devotions that's another that's a culture of the house isn't it uh, no phones on the food table are you following so um, i mean every family can look very different what they practice what they believe in uh, culture but culture is very important uh, a bad culture in a good setting uh, is still dangerous i'll say that again okay a bad culture in a good environment good setting is still dangerous um, example if i put a beautiful delicious tasty food right amazing food whichever your favorite cuisine is okay on a very dirty plate will you eat it yeah are you with me right uh, so a bad culture in a good environment is not helpful um and so that and um so it comes down to the leader to set the culture because if the leader doesn't set the culture the culture will be set for the leader by the people who he is leading i say that again if the leader doesn't set the culture if the head of the house doesn't set the culture good culture then the culture will be set by the people who he is leading and most of the times that might not be very nice right so coming on time is a culture showing up on time is a culture instilling that uh into the people that you are leading is very important right um so that's culture so culture is important because it helps people understand each other okay and shows what is accepted way of doing things in a certain environment uh, there's a huge responsibility on you guys as second years or, or as seniors and how you set a certain culture uh for the first years okay uh some of the cultures values purposes and dreams at apc just to go through uh what we kind of follow our culture is casual contemporary creative uh find creative way of expressing the message the gospel whatever uh everyone is a minister you must have understood that by now even from 
uh, the healing and deliverance course, uh, we keep saying that everybody can do this. It's not just uh, pastors, ministers, you know, leaders, etc. Everyone is a minister. That's the culture we try to set. Uh, Word-based, spirit-led, spiritual, yet practical, active, energetic, dynamic. That's the culture we are going for. And what are our values? Integrity, excellence in everything that we want to do, pursuing excellence, uh, staying on the leading edge of what God is doing, be it technology or whatever. Op opportunity for everyone, unity and cohesiveness, relationships. Uh, purposes, glorify and exalt the name of Jesus. APC is not the work of a man, a, a denomination or an organization, but it is the work of the Lord by His Spirit through His people. Make an impact to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice of nation, uh, voice to the nations of in uh, of India and to the nations. Win souls and make disciples everywhere, anytime. Okay, equip every believer, <clears throat> bring every believer to maturity, equip and release them to for ministry. At APC, every believer is a minister. That's our purposes. All right, um, dreams. Raise up five strong churches, each with over 50,000 people in Bangalore, uh, with each church having a powerful impact on all strata of society. Raise up several churches across this nation, in cities, towns, and villages, etc. Go into other nations, impacting various regions of the world with the gospel, raising up churches, Bible colleges, and making difference in the lives of people. Okay, so all of y'all are part of that dream. Yay! Pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> right, we are still there. We are on the way. We are in the pursuit. Okay. All good, guys. Any questions? Any thoughts you want to share? Okay. So, what were the three implications? Practical implications of being a family. Learn to conduct yourself. Boundaries. Yeah. Culture, yeah. Family has a culture, values, purposes, and dreams. Okay, so um, the ministry, the ministry that you might end up leading, you know, you should you know make sure you have all this in place. It's a lot of responsibility, setting up boundary lines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? It's all the best. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's keep going just a little bit more. <clears throat> Three important family practices in a local church. Three important family practices in a local church. Um, okay, first one is, yeah. APC, uh, our dreams, purposes, and all. So the things what it's actually mentioned are purposes, like uh, every believer is a minister. At APC and all these things when we see is it is it a particular calling to Pastor Rashish or or he's just following what what is there in Bible like you, you no, should this, you yeah. should make disciples uh, everywhere like the all these purposes your dreams or your principles yeah. these values and all yeah. is it a particular calling for Pastor Rashish and and for you the whole team or yeah. uh, you're following some instructions from Bible or like that so. It's a it's a very specific calling for Pastor Ashish. That is his dream, and what the dream that God has given to him. Right? In that, you still see uh, it's, it's still biblical in terms of going into all nations, uh, making disciples, uh, baptizing them. All of that is still achieved uh, in this dream, right? Because it's in it's in line. So uh, this in particular is specific to Pastor Ashish's, and we as associate. Pastors or staff, uh, we support that vision. Uh, you know, it's it's the vision for the, of the church. And so, uh, every area, every other ministries, like say youth ministry, worship team, uh, you know, so youth ministry will have a, its vision, and worship team has its vision, but it has to be in line with the vision of the church. It all right. So it it, it is a possibility, and the dan the danger of that possibility is that every ministry thinks okay, it's a separate entity, different thing, not even related to the church. Um, all right, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, 
it's a possibility to go off in one tangent saying, OK, this is youth ministry. We are young and vibrant. We'll do whatever we want to do. Uh, and that's it's, it's, it's happened. Um, that's when the vision is not very clear or it's not emphasized enough. So to answer your simple question, it is yeah, it's specific to Pastor Ashish. And uh, as we are under his supervision, uh, we kind of support that. We take all these things into our, our own ministry. If if someone want to do a ministry, yeah. you know, they can take or is all these things like particularly to Pastor Ashish. See, uh, in these purposes or or uh, values and all. Yeah. These are actually everyone should follow, right? Yeah. And yes. Yeah, and one more question is how we how we have to balance mm. our own calling mm. and our values and purposes. Uh, your own calling with values and see uh, if if i am called to a healing ministry yes how to balance my own calling right. for, from god right. and then all these things which they have to be there in church some things like this when we are talking all the, from all these chapters right. how the local church should be yeah. how to balance this and that so everything what you're learning from this course right anand then all of us uh, is you are not getting a finished product like for example, you go to Amazon, you order a table, you get a table, right? Um, so, but this course is all about uh, equipping you and giving you the tools so that you can build your own thing. So you have the tools and you can be creative and being creative by being sensitive to the leading of God's voice, uh, saying, okay, Lord, what is your vision for me? What is your burden for me? Because I believe that each and every single individual have a unique calling have a unique calling and you know every season there will be a season where you will be under the leadership of a man or a woman right uh, there was a time where elisha was under elijah uh, right and joshua was under moses um so it, it's it's very biblical isn't it and so uh, there will be a time where you will be an armor bearer for the king i'm talking metaphorically a season where you are the armor bearer for the king um there and then there will come a time I mean, it's 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 beautiful, right? Uh, even if when say you might get a call while you're 17, but for you to step into that calling, it might take you 14, 15 years, because in that period God might prepare you, and in that period He shapes you, and in that period you learn about the values, the purposes that He gives, isn't it? Um, David was anointed in First Samuel chapter 17, right? He gets the throne in Second Samuel. So for that 14, 15 years, he was running around wilderness you know running for his life but in that his character was developed he learned to certain values uh, you see that if he got a chance to kill Saul twice what was his value I will not touch the anointed one but uh, so integrity excellence uh, honoring one another it's those are what what we call as moral values it has to be instilled you know uh, generally and the, all of that supports your calling ultimately so and again, um, there are all tools that yeah. So you can build your ministry the way you want with all of this. I think it was in the previous class we learned uh, how you build, what you build, and the materials that you choose to build. Right is very important. So yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, uh, I hope you guys online are also doing all right. Um, all right, let's move on uh, from page 58. <clears throat> all right, three important family practices in a local church. Uh, walk in brotherly love. Okay. Walk in brotherly love. Okay, um, so First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, he says... But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are all who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Okay, so Paul is very positive uh, and he's also very encouraged by the church in uh, Thessalonica. Right? That this, uh, and he's saying, hey, you all are very encouraging. You are walking in brotherly love. Uh, he goes on to say, you should only increase. 
uh you know don't 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 let that come down uh you know continue to walk in that so um i think in hebrews chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 it says you express we express our love to god by serving one another it's such a beautiful verse isn't it uh hebrews 6 10 you can look at it later it says we express our love to god that means we say that i love you lord by serving one another and then us by walking you know uh walking in brotherly love and so walking in brotherly love simply means being kind okay uh, ladies please don't be offended that there's no sisterly love it's 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 neutral that way okay uh, <laughs> uh being kind be putting others above you know in front of you um by doing good supporting the weak restoring the fallen etc being being very encouraging it's very imp important okay so that's simply walking in brotherly love um and then keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit keep the unity and the fellowship of the spirit um ephesians 4 3 says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace conduct yourself dear prince <laughs> endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace endeavoring again in the notes it says to use speed that is to make effort be prompt or earnest do diligence be diligent endeavor labor study wow that's a lot of words to remember isn't it endeavor to keep the unity so i'll give you one simple word or partial two words proactive pro p r o hyphen active so what does that word say what is the opposite of proactive <laughs> i'm sorry guys opposite of active is inactive opposite of proactive is opposite of proactive is reactive you're welcome guys okay so <laughs> opposite of proactive is reactive okay so what happens is uh, most of the time we are reactive that means okay if someone does this then i will respond by doing this i will wait for something to fall then i will go pick it up and put it in its place it's like you know i will okay it looks like that's going to fall but i'm not going to do anything i'll wait for it to fall then i'll react proactive is you see something is about to go wrong you take the initiative that's what it is isn't it that's what the definition here says to use speed to make effort be prompt uh you know be diligent uh and labor so being proactive is very important i think if if you are all just proactive right in even even just in our relationships there wouldn't be a lot of misunderstanding is like why should i message her first let her message me first <clears throat> okay uh, you know what i'm talking about right uh, why should i say sorry first okay let the person say sorry and then i will be reactive and i'll think about what i should do if i should accept the apology or not <laughs> isn't it so proactive is the very beautiful thing it's a valuable lesson that i have learned in my life and that has saved me from and that's kept a lot of relationships in a very healthy place being proactive uh, it it stops you from assuming or making assumptions right um so you because it, when you're reactive you're wondering you're constantly assuming okay i think this person is arrogant i think this you're just making wrong assumptions of another individual right and so and it is it is not very healthy okay so uh, you know in the house of god strive it says to keep unity that means do everything you can take the initiative be proactive about keeping the unity right uh, you know don't just wait for it to come from a leader right and i've said this all the time with my team members as youth core team members uh, you know especially who's there to support me and help me in everything that i have to do is i love it when people are proactive that you know people who see the problem even before it comes it's just amazing to have people like that on the team 
it's like hey uh, so if we do if we have a registration form like this i think there might be a problem a certain people cannot register they're like wow that's awesome i didn't think of it as a leader you know thank you you see what i'm saying or you can be the person who's like hey you know what you, this registration form is not going to work you wait and watch you know so the people certain people take joy in watching other people fail and then they'll help like oh you know my grace is sufficient for thee <laughs> but okay uh, but it's a beautiful thing strive to keep the unity right and uh, god loves people like that and god absolutely hates people who tries to break the unity a bond he doesn't like them he detests them uh right so cut the gossip grumbling murmuring is some of the points in the notes uh we do not do anything out of selfish ambition or for self promotion uh when one person shares some information which is confidential and private we do not go and put put on put big billboard and say okay this person said this about this person now the whole world knows you know in my days we used to make fun of such people as uh, all india radio which is not famous now <laughs> okay uh yeah cool um i think we'll stop here uh, we'll take a break and we'll resume okay <laughs>